Before I begin this review, I would like to play a very special clip and I would like to give a very special huge thank you for Mark Galloway, a.k.a. LegoFan506. Hello, me. This is Kari Waldron, the voice of Tigress from Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness. Now listen, I've worked with Poe for a long time and I've learned a thing or two. And so if you find yourself in a vulnerable position and you need to get out of it, just remember the key word, skadoosh. Train hard, my friend. Learn the ways of Kung Fu. And I hope you never have to get into a dumpling eating contest with Poe. Listen, Poe drives me crazy sometimes, but I always like to think that deep down, we're good friends. Mark had told me that Carrie Walgren was a really wonderful person and was open to playing Tigress again, if given the opportunity, and that she even agreed that Legends of Awesomeness needed to be better story and development-wise, and even had some pretty dislikable flaws, but there was still a good handful of good episodes to enjoy. Once again, a massive special thank you to Mark Galloway, aka LegoFan506, and a very special thank you to Carrie Walgren for the little message. Thank you so much, and without further ado, let's roll on with the review. Alright, so I am with... Dara, hello! And today we are finally going to be doing a spoiler review with the release of Kung Fu Panda 4 coming out very soon actually in the UK and Ireland on Blu-ray and DVD. And um, Before we do the spoiler review, I want to give a few of my positives with the movie. Uh, first things first, the animation I think is absolutely stunning. I think it's visually the greatest looking animated movie I've ever seen in my life personally. I think it just looks stunning. So as you could say, one or two things look a little too cartoony but... It didn't really bother me too much. It still looked stunning. The jokes, I actually thought a lot of the comedy was really genius. I actually think it's second funniest to the first one. I did laugh my ass off quite a lot. Everyone's heard of the legendary Master Shifu, but not you. Did someone say legendary? Bring it in. I did like the music. While I actually would say this movie might have the weakest soundtrack, I still think the soundtrack is good and uh, Jack Black's cover of Hit me baby one more time. I will admit, I personally do prefer the other three songs. Now that's just me personally. Having that said, that's nothing against Tenacious D's Hit Me Baby. I still think it's really good. And I would say, uh, for me, it's my favourite scene in the movie when that song plays. I'd say my positives with it would mainly be the animation. It looks absolutely stunning. Like you said, it doesn't look too cartoony. It's yeah. not The Croods too. No, it's not Jaren, it's the same style, it's just some things, like you could say Kai and Tai Long, they look a little more cartoony in some shots. I really noticed it with Kai and Shen's eyes. Yeah, Shen's eyes are definitely more cartoony, Kai's eyes especially, but I think it's because um, Kai and Shen's models were last minute additions, from what I know, they were made out of six and glue. Yeah, I remember there was rumours on like film Twitter. With yeah. everybody saying there was last minute changes made after some test screenings. Mm. We don't exactly know if that's true, but given that they only had short appearances, I'd say yeah. it was fairly true. Yeah. Um no, I do think yeah, I, I I would agree there. Some things you would go, that looks a little cartoony, but still looks quite stunning, I'd say. I've seen a lot of people say that the character designs aren't they don't feel like Kung Fu Panda. They feel more like something like Zootopia. I can I can see that, yeah. But I think the character designs do still fit in. That links back into the animation. The animation yeah. on them and the movements. I don't think they have as much expression as some of the mm. other Kung Fu Panda characters, but it still looks amazing. Yeah, I think really it's just like this movie, the movements, especially in the fight scenes, are much faster. They're much more quicker. Like, especially when you see Poe kicking, he kicks, like, really, really fast. Yeah, because I remember we were talking... That they got MCU choreographers in to help yeah. out. So that really shows in the choreography. Yeah, no, like again, the action in it, I don't I don't know if I think this has the best action. There's two action scenes that I feel are a bit rushed, I will get to that in a moment. But I do think the movie has some really good action. I think the music is it's not as good as the previous three, but it does get the job done. Yeah, I agree there. I think I actually still stand by that Panda Three has the best soundtrack. Yeah, I'd agree with that one. I think Baby One More Time, it is a good song, but does it really feel like Comfy Panda? I know Tony really D not. was working on a song, and of course they wanted to inject 
a bit of comedy into it. Yeah. We had a prediction that we thought it was going to be fairly comedic, and it was. Yeah. I think I prefer Try from the third movie because it fit more for Poe's character about being yourself. Because that was kind of the lesson of Poe, you know, being a hero and how follow your heart, follow your dreams. And that was basically Poe's journey in these movies. But then again, it really did fit into the ending, which we'll probably get to later on. Yeah. I think the voice acting is really good too. Everybody, even though... It's not the best out of the entire franchise. I think no. all of the voice actors do a fantastic job. Yeah. And they like the characters. Jack Black is very passionate oh, about yeah. the franchise. And he's spoken about it in recent mm. interviews and even interviews from years ago. Yeah. That he still wants to do it. I don't know if he will sign on for other ones. I know he did say in his retirement speech that yeah. he wanted to do at least one more and then he'd hang up the suit. Yeah. No, I think, um, yeah, like you said, the voice acting here is very good. Aquafina, I actually think, does a pretty good job. I think Viola Davis does an outstanding job. And yeah, I would agree, the voice acting is very, very good. When I first heard that Aquafina was going to be in it, I was a little bit on the fence because she's been popping up in lots of animated movies lately. Hmm. So I didn't exactly know whether it was just going to be Aquafina being Aquafina or yeah. whether she was going to do a different take like she did with Migration. Yeah, well, I actually thought she did a decent job, and I actually think Jen is a decent character. I don't think she's an amazing character, but I do think she's pretty good. I think Aquafina actually fits that role. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that, actually. I think Viola Davis initially, when I found out she was going to be the chameleon, again, a little bit on the fence, but I have seen lots of her other movies, and she's pretty scary. Yeah, she's a very talented actress, that's for sure. She's very articulate with the way she mm. speaks as well, and that really came through with the comedian. Oh, yeah, definitely. Some of the lines that were written, very articulate. I'd yeah. say she had some influence on the lines. Yeah, I think I'd agree there, actually. So for me, my biggest problem was the story. The story, like, the worst part about it for me, it felt hollow. I will get into that later on. But I think what really broke my heart from a biased perspective as a long-time fan was it felt hollow. I think it was ridiculously predictable. I thought the plot twist... I I thought Poe and Jen had a decent little bond. Like, they had some nice interactions, especially with them on the boat. That was nice, and it was... I thought it was really fun exploring Juniper City. The music was great. The visuals were great. It was just really fun. And especially when we saw it in 4DX, because I can't deny, (laughs) this movie was a ball in 4DX. It was so fun. Yeah. So fun. Oh yeah, definitely, especially in the climax, which was amazing in 4DX. I enjoyed the scene with Juniper City, I thought that was fun. So I did like Jen as a character, I thought she was good, she was, you know, she was, she was charming. The plot twist was ridiculous for me, because Crazy. what's the point in having Poe and Jen talk, like, become friends, then have Jen betray Poe, and the way it's done is just so forced, but also, I'm not saying it's bad because it's predictable, the reason why I don't like it here is because it's just ridiculous. Because we know the minute she betrays Poe, she's going to turn back later on. Yeah. It's just, what's the point? Because the audience knows where it's going to go. And it doesn't make it interesting. Like, I think it would have been more interesting if they kind of did something like Jen worked for the chameleon, but then felt betrayed, then wants to be her own thief, then her little redemption arc is basically becoming the new dragon warrior i know a lot of people don't think she's worthy to be the dragon warrior and while i wouldn't yeah i wouldn't say so either but i again i i think she's not it's not a bad choice but i think like if if they had you know like say maybe there could have been a plot twist maybe if you know tigress could have been the successor and jen become like a furious five member that would have been an interesting plot twist if you ask me but yeah i did like like don't get me wrong decent character and the fight scene with her and poe amazing fight choreography love the visuals i don't like how it's just copying poe and tigress's scene from the second movie don't get me wrong mm-hmm. it's a stunning scene i just and the visuals are amazing i love seeing poe when he's angry i love that scene where he's talking about the staff that's that's fantastic I love when you see that shot of Poe's face, like, angry. It just brings back, reminds you so much of the second film. I just think my only problem is just, like, I've seen this before. And don't get me wrong, Stone and Fight, it, the choreography was amazing, especially that shot with the lightning. I just didn't like the plot twist with Jen. It just, it was ridiculously predictable. Agreed. I think for me, 
the story it felt very disconnected from the previous three yeah a lot of that's the big um part about it uh, as it's you know since it came out the big is that this film feels so detached and disconnected from the last three which is a shame because um, like again there really was potential to tell a, a story like a conclusive story yeah to wrap up the franchise on a bang and have like an epic ending because even when Jack Black was announcing it and he was talking about the plot, it really seemed like that it was the end of the franchise because all yeah. the previous villains were coming back. Yeah. And you had what seemed to be the most powerful villain that Poe's ever gone up against being able to bring back everybody he's ever faced. Yeah. And like while I do agree with that, and while I do like like the chameleon, I thought the chameleon, I think she is a good enough villain. I think she's, she's decent. My biggest, like, okay, I'll start with my positives. Viola Davis, outstanding performance. Can't deny that. I especially, I really like some of her dialogue. That scene with, um, when she's bringing back Tai Long, I love that little joke she makes before that. That makes me laugh my ass off. I think the design is fantastic. But my biggest problem, what holds her back for me, she's barely in the movie. And she doesn't do anything really and the most evil thing she does in the entire runtime is push a guy down the stairs yeah it's so it's ridiculous like i mean it would have been cooler if maybe he she the elephant grabbed the bear by the trunk and then threw him that probably would have been better than just pushing them down <laughs> because her introduction was cool when she was sitting at the table with juniper city's head of criminals mm. and they're all there they're all kind of talking about her behind her back and yeah. she really shows she's sitting as like a crocodile and that shows that she could literally be anybody. Yeah, exactly. And I do like, you know, when they're in the noodle shop and they talk about how the chameleon, oh, she's this magical sorceress. She's so powerful. Okay, that's cool because, you know, it's building her up as this big threat. But like what I said earlier, I feel she's barely in the movie. I feel, um, like I said, the twist with Jen is ridiculous, but I did like the interaction with her and Jen. Like I did like, you know, What's the first, like, the rules of the streets? That was cool. What's the second rule of the streets? Someone always gets hurt. Third rule of the streets? No one is interested in your feelings. And I did think, as well, the damage. She barely does any shapeshifting. She mm. barely does any damage. Like, okay, she shapeshifts into Tai Long, which was... Actually, I will admit, I loved the beginning. I think the beginning of the movie was pretty epic with Tai Long coming back. It was a cool opening. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's right. It is I, Tai Lung. Shape shifts into a crocodile. That was pretty cool. Turns into the elephant and then doesn't turn into anyone else until she meets Poe when she's doing the, uh, the wolf, the, the crocodile, and the rhino. The rhino. The yeah, she does a rhino. And then, obviously, she turns into Tai Lung and Jen later on. I think in the final battle, the chameleon was epic. It's just what holds her back was just, she's barely in the movie, and the backstory, ridiculous. Just ridiculous. I think the problems with the story for me was, Jen's plot twist was very predictable. Yeah. I'm kind of noticing a trend with these twist villains, or twist anti-heroes, yeah. that it either falls under one of three categories. It's either a mentor, hmm. a family figure, or love interest, yeah. or an apprentice. Yeah, but I think, like, with, say, like, again, it's just, I didn't even think the, the twist was executed well. I mean, I did like the little interactions with Jen and the chameleon, like I said, the rules of the streets. There was some decent dialogue, and I did like the chameleon's interaction with Tai Long. I, lo I love the dialogue there. Who are you, and what are you doing with that stuff? This was given to me by an old friend of yours. The Puffy Panda? <laughs> Poe might be an idiot, but he'd never willingly hand over Oogway's staff to the likes of you. Who said anything about willingly? Um, like I said, Viola Davis does an outstanding performance. What holds her back is just... She doesn't do anything, really. She only does something until the final battle. I think Jeanne is kind of on and off, though, as a character. She starts out as a crook, but she's not exactly evil. Yeah. Then, as she develops a relationship with Poe, she starts to get closer to him, and she starts to sympathise with him, yeah. because they've gone through so many things, and they've come through strange beginnings, or sometimes dark pasts. Yeah. But when she 
turns over to the chameleon. It's very clear that she doesn't like the chameleon. She yeah. doesn't necessarily agree with her worldview. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. When she comes out, when the chameleon shapeshifts into Jen, yeah. she wants to save him. Then she comes in later on, oh, you're alive. You yeah. really expect him to forgive her after yeah. what she's caused. And then she tries and fights him. And then she goes back, oh, we need to get the villains, the criminals yeah. to help out. Uh, it's, ju- it's just very predictable. And it's very yeah. like a sob story. No, kind of I, I agree with that. Because like, it's just like, we know even when she betrays Poe, we just know she doesn't agree with the chameleon. And it's just like, what's the point? It's it's ridiculous. And speaking of villains, what did you think of Tai Long in this? When I first found out that he was coming back, the hype was all the way up to here. Mm. All the way up to here. Tai Long. Big fan. But then when I actually saw him in the finished product, I think the problem was the marketing was very misleading. Yeah. Because it seemed to imply that he was going to come in at the start, he was going to go try and find Poe, and that they were going to team up to fight the chameleon. Mm. Not so much Shen and Kai, because I'd say they would have stayed with the chameleon. I think they'd gone too far to turn to the good side. Yeah. But Tai Long in the actual movie was severely underused, in my opinion. I feel like when Tai Long comes back, um, I did like how he comes back, you know, when Tai Long and the chameleon interact. And again, the fight scene was, it's my second favourite, it's actually my third favourite scene in the movie. Mm-hmm. I felt the problem with his fight scene was it was just a tad bit rushed and I hate to be nitpicky. I did feel it was a tad bit rushed, but I do like his little interactions later on. I do like when he meets Poe again. I thought that was cool. I do love when at the end of the movie he sees, to, you know, he learns, he obviously sees how far Poe has come. And I think he kind of, you know, he accepts his fate and he's happier in the spirit realm. I thought it was genius to have him take the chameleon with him. That was hilarious. So I do, I did like what they do with Tai Long. I agree he's underused. And I think it would have been better if maybe he joined Poe and had interactions with Shifu and Tigris. I think that would have been pretty peak. But I think with Shen and Kai, they're nothing in this movie. Like, they're literally... They don't, they're not even in it, really. They're completely useless. They've nothing to do. And with Tai Long as well, he comes in, he has a 30-second fight scene, yeah. he has interactions with the chameleon, and even though Viola Davis and Ian McShane weren't in the same room, because with voice acting, you were yeah. on your own, you could actually feel the chemistry between them, or yeah. the little backwards dynamic between them. That yeah. there was something there. He gets the fight scene for 30 seconds where he takes out multiple people and he proves yet again that he's an absolute badass. Oh, yeah. And then he gets his powers taken away from him and he does nothing for the rest of the movie. Yeah, no, and I think, like, at least with Tai Long, see, I felt some of this was a little nostalgia bait because when, you know, how in the beginning you go, Tai Long this, Tai Long that, Tai Long that, I felt that was a little nostalgia bait. But it's just with Shen and Kai, like, they get, you know, like, you obviously you hear them mention, but, like, they're not, like relevant it's just like oh it's kai oh it's shen and that's it and then shifu when he found out that tai long had returned he brushes it off he doesn't really show much care and he just says this is a job for the five and the five are gone no he doesn't is it not though he obviously just hears about uh well actually yeah he would have found out that tai long came back i think he hears about it but he never really acknowledges it yeah that's another problem like it just like again I do think the be- the moment where Tai Long bows to Poe is very nice, and you know when he says, "I think it's time we send us back to the spirit realm, Dragon Warrior." But I think like the problem was with it felt wrong not having Shifu and Tigris there because they are his big relations. Yeah, that was the big problem with his character, and that was a story point that they wanted to include when Stephanie Mastine was yeah. working with Mike Mitchell. She wanted to put that interaction in and she was fucked off because she was working on TV shows and she only had experience with TV shows. Yeah. And I think that interaction with Shifu would have been good because it was very clear that they needed to make up. And Tai Long, it's very clear that he's learned to kind of chill out and he's come a long way. He's learned to accept Poe and he accepts now that what he did was wrong and he went a little bit too far. So I think him and Shifu needed to reconcile for a proper redemption arc. Yeah. But I still think the bow is nice because he sees Poe as an idiot. Yeah. And he makes a joke about it when he comes back. Yeah. But when he sees him fight the chameleon, he respects him because 
even though he didn't get along with them and he's fought them in the past, he's had beef with them before, he was still willing to put his life on the line to save even his enemies. Yeah, no, and that was that was that was good. But like I think um like again, it felt hollow not having Shifu there for most of the movie. And again, it just feels kinda of like a hollow finale for Poe's story. Like there's so many people just gone. And while I do like Mr. Ping and Lee Shan in this movie, I think they're really funny. I don't get the whole when Lee Shan's being trying to be brave because it's like you fought off the wolves, you need you tried to fight off Shen, you learned kung fu and teamed up with Mr. Ping. Why is it all of a sudden you're afraid of something? <laughs> I thought it was cool how he was confident about his son. Like he goes, "Relax, Poe is the dragon warrior. He's brave. He's strong." I thought that was cool because he was. Confident and proud of his son. If I know our son, he's probably just kicking back and catching some rays. Poe has faced demons, demigods, and everything else in between. He's always come out on top. I just didn't get the whole being brave thing. I thought that was a little odd. And with the villains as well, there was also potential where they could do something similar to Puss in Boots' The Last Wish, where they had something similar to panic attacks. Yeah. Because you could have had the chameleon shape-shifting into Tai Long which could trigger memories for Shifu, and probably would. Yeah. You could have Shen interacting with Li Shan, that would traumatise him. And there was yeah. a rumour ages ago that she was going to shapeshift into Poe's mother to yeah. try and get at him. Yeah, no, that would have been good, because it gives, you know, it adds a lot of depth to the chameleon and shows how evil she can be. But I think, like, you know, with Poe in this movie... I do like him. I think there's a little bit more growth here than there was for him in 3, because I felt in 3 he just becomes more of a badass. He doesn't really grow as much of a person. I felt here, he does grow... I felt my biggest gripe was in the beginning of, I want to stick to being the Dragon Warrior. I just want to kick butts and take names. <laughs> was that No, in the third movie, when he, want, when he was being chosen to be a teacher, he says the exact same thing. I want to just stick to kicking butt. Like, did we not already do this in the fourth movie and to me with you know spiritual leader i just didn't get like it just seemed to me it was just teacher all over again it was just the same character arc and they were pe- they were repeating the same threads yeah no and it was just it's just like i didn't get his character arc it's just like it felt too similar to three and well i don't th- i think like maybe there's a bit more growth here than there was in three but like i don't think it's anywhere near as good as his character arc in one and two and Shen and Kai, absolutely useless. They do yeah. absolutely nothing. Oh, yeah, they don't even really speak. They're voiceless yeah. cameos. Yeah, no, Gary Oldman, brought back, Simmons. You could have easily brought back the voice actors. And I, yeah. could, I know they're expensive, but Gary Oldman's retiring soon, which is, yeah. I don't know if he's already retired. I know he was in Oppenheimer recently. Yeah. But he's retiring fairly soon. Wouldn't you think it would have been fair to have him play Shen at least once more? Yeah. And I think, like, as well... And the biggest problem, the thing that broke my heart the most, what really annoyed me, I still remember when I was when I heard about being confirmed that they were going to be in the movie, I was chuffed, but then when I saw the movie for myself, I walked out so heartbroken, and as a long-time fan, this really, really broke my heart. The Furious Five. Not in the movie, until the credits, and my favourite character, my favourite character in the franchise, and my favourite fictional character tied with Tootless, only has about 15 seconds of screen time, and no Angelina Jolie. That broke my heart. Don't get me wrong, it was amazing seeing the Furious Five again, it was nice that they get to train Jen, but the damage had already been done. And they try and nostalgia bait it at the start of the movie, where one of the kids asks, are the Furious Five here with you? And Poe's sitting there going, oh no, they're not here right now, they're on top secret missions. And they try oh, and make yeah. the missions very comedic. And then they say, oh no, but they're here as life-size cutouts. I hate to be nitpicky, but that just feels insulting. Again, Lee Shan and Mr. Ping don't speak in that scene. I'm sure you can have the Furious Five be there in the background. It just, as a long-time fan, this just had me devastated. And I actually feel if you had the Furious Five in here and with the right execution, you can give them a good B-plot. You can develop Tigress's leadership skills. You could have each of them interact with Jen. I think they'd all bounce off each other with Jen very well. 
I think Tigress and Jen especially, they were orphans. They could have been like sisters. And I think that was such a missed opportunity. And I know they promised a fifth movie. I know they promised a fifth movie would be the return of the Furious Five. But to me, what's the point? I'm sorry, just don't do another two movies, please. I think yeah. this franchise has had its time to shine. Oh, and I yeah. think it's starting to wear thin now. Yeah, no, and again, the, like we had, you know, we had the first movie, you had Secrets of the Furious Five, you had Legends of Osmus, the Christmas special, the second movie, the other two shorts, the third movie. Then you had the Paz Destiny, which was the first thing to kick out the Furious Five. Then you had the Dragonite kicked out the Furious Five again and even kicks out the Pandas. Now we have the fourth movie, which pretty much kicks out the Furious Five. And again, it was just as a long time fan since 2008, it broke my heart that this is what we got. We're just all their own missions, but you don't see them at all until the credits and no speaking. And what's more insulting is, from what I can gather and what I remember correctly, they brought Seth Rogen in to do a few screams for Mantis. Yeah, he does a grunt on the scream and that's it. And that's it. They do get a scream for Monkey, but that's I think that's just a monkey scream sound effect. He's credited. If you watch the credits, Seth Rogen's credited yeah. as an additional voice. Yeah, which is a bit weird because he has no lines. But it's just like, again, don't get me wrong, it's a great moment when they do come in. It's just... It's annoying because they don't speak. And while I do like the ending, I think it does... It's basically a passing the torch ending. It works at the conclusion, but honestly, it doesn't even... It's not, like, in all honesty, I don't think it's worth leaving it here. But, like, I just don't see the point in making more because you had this movie as an opportunity to bring the franchise to a really satisfying conclusion and to have a great, you know end and wrap up for Paul and the relationships but what we get is characters kicked out voiceless villains um well actually I should say characters don't turn up until the end for to be only to be voiceless and then you know we get something that's so ridiculously rushed as well because mm-hmm. I think the pacing is just extremely rushed it goes by way too quickly and I just think you know the end of the movie before the credits it's so sudden like, why does it have to end? Like, don't get me wrong, it's a funny moment where Shifu's trying to meditate, but, like, why does it end like that? And then another issue as well is the overusage of comedy. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some <laughs> funny scenes in it, like the inner Shifu's gag. That, oh, was really, yeah. that was really funny. Yes. But that gag kind of did wear thin after a while. Hmm. A little bit. But I think the movie relies far too much on comedy rather than focusing on the story because we never are explained Jen's backstory proper. We do get a few flashbacks, but we never get to see the consequences of those actions. The comedian's Mm. backstory is ridiculous. Yeah. Too small to do Kung Fu. Yeah, it's so dumb. That's going to be the subject. I get what they were going for. They wanted to do the Hiccup and Grimmel thing where Hiccup met Tootless, he didn't kill him, he spared him. Grimmel met a Night Fury, he killed it. But they kind of already did that with Poe and Shen because Poe accepted his past didn't define him he let it go Shen was too hostile to let go of the past and that led him on the dark path Shen was basically a darker mirror I get what they're going for it's just the line delivery and no flashback either is just so so dumb yeah because there's lines with the comedian as well where she's constantly saying to Poe that the two of us are basically dark mirrors where polar opposites were alike in so many different ways we both come from humble beginnings we both wanted to become something more I chose the villain path you chose the good path yeah like again I do love the moment where the comedian and Poe interact before the final battle I thought that was peak I thought that was Poe at his peak I love the final battle of the movie I controversially think it is the best final battle I say that because I just love seeing Poe get his ass kicked by all the villains all at once. And I did love the little interaction with Poe and the chameleon. That was how I wanted Poe to be in the final battle. Confident, prepared. And I did love, you know, the little bit with the dragon. A little over the top, but it was just fun. And I did love the evil Poe fight. It was just the choreography. Just stunning to me. And then just with the final battle as well. It is brilliant. The choreography is stunning. The shape-shifting is very well done with yeah. the animation. I remember reading before I watched it that it was inspired by horror movies. Mm. The animation on it was supposed to 
appear frightening. Yeah. Which they really did. I actually wasn't expecting it to look as scary as it did. No. Like, again, the dragon fight is a little over the top. I suppose the f- little fight with Jen, the chameleon's a little... It's a little too quick. I still like the choreography of it. Yeah. And I suppose... I do love the part where Poe, like, hits the chameleon with the staff and then he just goes... Skadoosh. And then... But I suppose... I can see where people are coming from with the way the chameleon's taken out too easily. Yeah. But I did really like the final battle and I loved the music. I thought the music in the final battle was excellent. And then the chameleon was saying, when she interacts with Poe, another nitpick I had with the interaction is that it's so late on in the movie. I think the Hmm. hero and the villain should meet early on to establish their relationship. I think it would have been cool if there was a scene like when Puss met the wolf or when Hiccup met Grimmel. Maybe the heroes kind of, they think they have the upper hand and they kind of get a bit cocky. But then when the villain goes, nope, I have the upper hand and just boom. I think with the chameleon that they never explain her backstory in full. She Mm -hmm. only says that she came from humble beginnings. She wanted to become something more. She wanted power and respect. But above all, she wanted to be able to do Kung Fu and become a master. Yeah. And she, she was told she was too small, and because she was too small, she was turned away from every single hall that she went to. But yeah. when Mantis and Viper are right there, and they've yeah. been there from day one... Not to mention Shifu as well. That just retcons those characters. Yeah. No, and again, it's just like... I get what they were going for with the backstory, it's just the line delivery is done. And no flashback either. That was another thing that annoyed me. Because there was a rumour that the chameleon... By the time the first movie was going on, all those events were happening and the chameleon was supposed to be a child who Mm -hmm. looked up to Poe and wanted to be like him. And when she showcased her shape-shifting abilities to other people, she was mocked and jeered. Hmm. Yeah, no, I just think, again, they had a lot of potential with the chameleon. She could have been the next Lord Shen. Like, she could have been the greatest villain DreamWorks have ever done, I feel. And it's just, again, good enough just such a waste of potential and like great performance and a great design and a fun personality. She's a lot like Lord Shen 2.0, but just a lot holds her back. I think they said, we remember seeing a trailer or a little, little featurette that they played before movies and cinema. And I think mm. they said they used about 7,000 controls. Yeah, I think if you focus more on the cool aspects like the shape shifting, causing damage... We go, oh my god, this is a villain you don't want to mess with. And some of the powers are a little bit over the top. You mentioned the dragon, but yeah. also with evil Poe, you have the tongue. Yeah, true. Again, it's a bit... You're kind of going, what? But it's just... I don't know. I just thought it was really fun. And the fire. Oh, yeah, no. I will admit, that was a little over the top as well. But I love the callback to the second movie when Poe basically burns his hand. Yeah, that was, that was cool, but the fire and the tongue were very over the top. Yeah, you a little far-fetched, I feel. And it's not... They're supposed to exhibit the traits of whatever character they're masquerading. Yeah. F- Br- Poe can breathe fire. Poe doesn't have a massive tongue. I know she's a chameleon, and she's yeah. still the same on the inside. She's just being a different character. Yeah. But there was no need for the tongue. Yeah. And while, don't get me wrong, I don't hate the movie, I think it's, you know, I do think it's good enough, and I do think there is some merit, and there is some parts I like. It's just, from a non-biased perspective, I do think Kung Fu Panda 4 is a enjoyable, fun, uh, action movie. I think, as a non, from a non-biased perspective, I think it's, you know, not bad, it's decent. It's just, as a, from a biased perspective, as a massive fan, a long-time fan, it really broke my heart. I forgot to mention as well, actually, I did like the new techniques that they employed. I liked that they use used GoPro cameras and oh, GoPro yeah. vision. And with the evil Poe fight, they were going up and down and up and down. Yeah. They were using different kinds of camera angles and shots to... Oh, yeah. And they were doing the fight from different perspectives, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, again, the action is really well staged. It's so well choreographed. And I actually think with the animation being more cartoony, it helps that because it makes the fight scenes much quicker. There were some third-person shots, too, I think. Really? Which were really cool, I think so. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. I think overall with the movie, I think the animation is amazing. I don't think it's as top tier as the other movies. I think it looks a little bit too cartoony sometimes. Hmm. But the cartoony aspects do help 
with some of the GoPro shots and yeah. different camera angles that they want to use. The updated rendering on the villains is fantastic. Oh, the design yeah. of the chameleon and the shape shifting is the best part of her, not as a character, but as a design yeah. and making a good villain from animation. And the amount of controls that they used to bring her to life was mm. absolutely fantastic. And yeah. that's, that poses new challenges for DreamWorks. Yeah. No, again, like you say, you do make some good points. Again, there is, you know, there is merit in this movie. I won't deny there is some decent characters, some really funny jokes. There is some great action and there is some, you know, decent moments. It's just, for me, it feels hollow. It's ridiculously unnecessarily predictable. And I just think the pacing, it's way too fast. I don't understand the whole... We can't have these movies be longer than 90 minutes because kids, because of kids' attention spans. This is the same company that did the How to Train Your Dragon sequels, Puss in Boots 2 and The Bad Guys, and they were all 100 minutes. And they were very well received. Yeah. So I don't really get why a Kung Fu Panda movie couldn't be 100 minutes. Like, Panda 3, at the very least, was actually 95 minutes. I know this movie is 94 minutes, but honestly, it was like 70 minutes. I know a lot of people will say... I know budget is a big is a big excuse now. I know a few people will say it's because of the universal restructuring, but that happened years ago. Yeah, and I also it's a Kung Fu Panda movie. Surely you can have a Kung surely you, you're able to get the budget be bigger. I think the story, because of the budget, the script was very half baked. Mm. The story was predictable, the characters, the newer characters aren't that interesting. They're just yeah. there for comic relief. Even the characters that are a part of the story and actually have something to do, they don't have flesh out, fleshed out backstories. Yeah. They're pretty boring to watch, especially the chameleon. Uh, and she's wasted potential. Yeah. No, and again, it's just, again, they could have... So, and what's... I think this movie could have been, like, the best of the bunch, or even maybe second best. If you, like, the right movie for me would have been The Return of the Villains, The Furious 5B plot, Everyone has something to do and everyone contributes to the plot and a better backstory for the chameleon. I think this movie could have been peak. It could have been Kung Fu Panda No Way Home. You yeah. could have had, I would have liked to have seen the chameleon come in. You could have had the same battle in the arena, but you could have had all three of the villains come back from the spirit realm, have them actually speak and interact with Poe and have all four of the villains fight Poe and Jen and the Furious Five all in one go. Yeah. No, again, it, it it really did. It really was a waste opportunity, and I just, I honestly feel like I don't think I'll watch it as much as I watched the other ones. I did see it five times in the cinema, but that was only because I've seen it. You know, you friends, yeah. and family, and myself. But it's just as a big fan, it really does just break my heart. I think it's just. It's not a boring movie. It's a fun it's not movie. It's bad, yeah. It's a fun movie. It does have some good jokes in there. Yeah. It does have some good heart in the right places. True. But it's not as strong as the previous ones. Yeah. And I think, like, while Panda 3 wasn't the best, it was... It did have more... It did have more charm. And it had... I do believe Panda 3 handled some things the best. I think Panda 3 does have some of the best scenes of all three. And then the music, while it's decent, I do think Baby One More Time does fit into the training montage with The Furious Five and Jen. Yeah. Because if you think about it, it's very fast paced. And yeah. it did annoy me that it was only 30 seconds or maybe a little bit more. Mm. But I think they're making a lot of empty promises. They're seeming desperate with this franchise now that The Furious yeah. Five are going to come back. And I guarantee you now, they're going to make a lot of empty promises like they did with this one. Every yeah. single character you remember is going to come back. Yeah, where was Oogway? Where was Master Ox? Where was Master Croc? Where was Master Bear? Master Chicken? And they did say with Tai Long that his relationship with Chifu and Oogway was going to play a big role in the movie. No, it and doesn't. And they do anything with it. Yeah, it doesn't even exist. They don't do anything with it. If you really <laughs> believe that, you would have had him interact with Chifu and say one last goodbye. Exactly. Now, again, before I wrap this up, it's not terrible. It's a decent film. It does have, you know, a lot to like. It's just, it's a bit of a letdown. It's a letdown as a sequel. 
that yeah. a lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot of people were clamouring for it, because I know a few people saw Kung Fu Panda 3 as the somewhat of a conclusion, the yeah. grand finale, but I do know a lot of people in the fandom, myself included, and yourself, were quite excited for it when we found out, oh, the villains are coming back, mm. we have a chameleon who's a sorceress who has the power to bring them all back, he has to face all of the Poe has to face all of his enemies one last time, and he's going to be passing on the torch to a successor. Yeah, no, and again, like, I think it would have been nice to have one more journey with Poe and the That's a finale. Time. Yeah. And they didn't give us a finale. They just give us kind of a, a hollow, half-baked, a very, maybe a little anti-conclusive, but maybe that's just me being harsh, but it just, they really, they, they messed up a lot, I feel. It was just nostalgia bait, and it yeah. never really justifies its own existence. Unfortunately, no. But, unfortunately. And again, it had potential. Like, it could have been a great banger to end the series, and unfortunately, it's just wasted. I just, I don't see the point. I'd love a Furious 5 spin-off, and that's it. And with the news recently that Donkey is getting his own spin-off movie, I don't see why the Furious 5 can't have a spin-off. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. It's oh no, they, and they deserve it. Like they've been they've been kicked out of three properties now. I would say if you're a fan of Kung Fu Panda and you're a fan of the comedy, I think you'll like the movie. I don't think you'll like it quite as much as the previous three, but I would definitely say it's it's more childish, I think. Yeah. A little bit more childish with the comedy. And there's not as much maturity to it. But I think the problem there is, is enjoyment in it. Yeah. There are a few jokes with the adults in there yeah. that the adults will appreciate. But I think as a sequel that was long finale. in the works and yeah. could have been a grand finale, it's a big letdown. Yeah. And unfortunately, it really could it, like it really could have been so much better. And something grand. Yeah. So thank you all so much for watching. Take care guys. See you for the next video. And until then, thank you very much to Lego Fan506, aka Mark Galloway, for the clip with Carrie Walgren. And thank you, Carrie Walgren, for the little message. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care guys. Stay tuned for future videos. And until then, skidoo.